I and my friend Claire Pickersgill from the Nottingham University Museum wanted to collaborate on an interesting theme. We're both Romanists, so it had to be something Roman. And we thought, what about a, a part of Roman life that we don't normally hear about that is of interest to everyone? So we chose sexuality, Roman sexuality. And we chose as the star object the Warren Cup, one of the prize objects in the British Museum. And we wanted around that to build an exhibition that would put the cup into a context to explain what sexuality meant to the Romans and to show all its different aspects. With the University of Nottingham Museum, we have a lot of Roman material, mainly from the local Roman site of Margadunum, which is at Bingham. And we have this on display and, uh, with different topics. So, for example, we have something on Roman religion, Roman food and drink, Roman personal adornment. And I was interested, therefore, in doing another Roman topic. And so this topic, uh, especially when Paul had offered the Warren Cup, um, it sort of presented itself. And I was also particularly interested in it because it's a... Um, well, it's not a topic often discussed, and there's also a lot of misunderstanding. The Warren Cup uh, was made about the turn of the first century AD, so about 15 BC to 15 AD. And it was found, so the only reference we have says, it was found near Jerusalem. It's a silver drinking cup, and it portrays two couples of male lovers and it's unique. It's the only representation of male lovers in a silver cup or a gold cup to have survived from antiquity. So it's a very important piece. It was bought by a, an American collector who lived in uh, Britain, who lived in south of Britain, in Lewis in Sussex, called Ned Warren. It stayed in his hands until the late 1920s. When he died, his heir tried to sell the piece, and he tried to sell it to various museums, including the British Museum. Um, but we were unable to buy it. Uh, it was considered difficult to display. And the head of the trustees of the British Museum was the Archbishop of Canterbury, which may have played a role. So it went abroad. It uh, was exported or tried to be exported to America, but the customs at America didn't like the look of it, so turned it back. It was in the 1990s that it was first displayed in America uh, in the Metropolitan Museum of New York. And then in 1999, the British Museum acquired it formally, and it's been in the collections of the British Museum since then. What's so interesting about it, this is a silver cup, of course, it would have been owned by um, a particular class of person, but what we do have, we have images of um, the sexual acts on lots of different objects, on lamps, um, on uh, vases, and uh, these were objects that everyday people would be seeing and using. These weren't expensive objects. And also the other thing about these is that they do vary. I mean, some of them have very tender scenes. Uh, some of them do display the actual sexual act. I mean, what the objects together can tell us, and this is the, the value, really, of bringing objects together in an exhibition like this, what they can tell us is that the picture we have of the Romans, either from the Victorians or even from the Romans themselves, when the Roman writers uh, are writing their volumes, their poetry, they tend to be of a particular social class, writing for a social class, and often writing for a particular gender, i.e. males. So we don't get the full picture. So when we look at the objects, we begin to get a much fuller picture and a much more diverse view of sexuality than the Romans themselves would have had us believe in their writings.